most of us would end up joining the Gob Alpha Core unit. Uh, nevertheless, I decided to continue to work on translations in my free time. Uh, then some time passed and Kat came to me with the idea of resurfacing the Ambassador program once started by Growth under her command. Uh, we gathered a team and presented the signal request asking for funding for a pilot for the program which would focus on translating essential material for the LATAM community and participating in calls and events. Uh, the pilot was a success as translation milestones were achieved and the program caused a great uh, impression on LATAM communities through its new Twitter account. Uh, and I believe it's because uh, results were shown that community backed us in our next voting, which was our first MIP-55. We requested a special purpose fund to extend the program for six months and keep working on what we've been doing so far, which was translations and community building. Um, by just that time, we suffered the sudden departure of CAT, uh, and the program found itself at an inflection point, I'd say. Uh, although the holders supported us, we also received uh, important feedback from community uh, actors, uh, and the team had an indoor debate and decided to change uh, our focus in the order uh, in order to achieve a greater impact in the region uh, translations of things like weekly relay for the glance and stuff like that was taking just too many man hours to do uh, and it wasn't creating a, a great impact or participation from the community uh, we noticed a great lack of educational resources to be translated and decided to focus on creating the basis for a real educational plan for maker down in latin america I'll speak from my experience uh, here in Argentina, which is one of the countries with the biggest adoption of cryptocurrencies in LATAM. Uh, and when you talk to somebody about cryptocurrencies, the, the, actual, the usual reaction is this strange look, like uh, you're trying to sell them something or steal something from them. And this happens, I don't know, six out of 10 times. Education on Web3, uh, what Web3 is, uh, what stablecoins are, and what they can do for people here is extremely low. So when you bring this subject up with someone, it initially falls into one of two possible classifications. This is a scam or this is too complex for me to understand. And simplification of the complex is something uh, very hard to do sometimes, especially when we talk about a DAO, which resembles a living thing uh, in constant change and evolution especially now with the end game that's a real challenge uh, we found the best way to to get to people was to turn down a notch our educational resources i mean we had to offer the maker operational manual and the maker docs which often are too technical for someone who's starting from scratch into what maker dao is essentially what a dao is what a stable going is and what die is so during the, this past uh, six months the program has fulfilled its milestones of translating critical information like mom new pages or makers official Twitter threads uh, and participating in educational calls with different communities and entities from the ecosystem in addition to consolidating itself as a point of reference on MakerDAO in the Latin American region. But the program has also started uh, a series of new projects to go beyond that MIP-55 and as I mentioned earlier to create a basis for a new educational project. Tim quickly started to work on a new website focused entirely in LATAM, a place to work as a reference for current and future projects of the program, but also to gather all educational material in Spanish in one single place. Uh, we also created an educational introductory portal in Spanish, starting from the very beginning, what a DAO is, what Maker DAO is, the Dai Foundation's role at the beginning, how the peg works, and so on. Uh, I could read the full list of articles, but you can just check it out yourselves on the website. Uh, we also started our Meet the Maker series and Coffee Hour Hours in Twitter uh, to get the community in touch with actual Latin American members from MakerDAO and explain the basic aspects of the protocol and have the possibility to ask questions directly. Uh, we introduced a LATAM MakerDAO newsletter, which has been praised by the whole community and became a big point of interest for ecosystem members, all of them receiving good and nice share from badges, which are awarded when you have a visitor from outside the community to the post or contribution. Also, besides participating in different community calls and interviews uh, for different organizations and entities, 
We are assist currently assisting in the creation of the first LATAM representative delegate platform, which is SID LATAM. And this is very exciting because not only the ambassador program has become a, a major point of reference, but because it will, this will help to further decentralize MakerDAO and will mark a big milestone in this direction. Uh, I believe it's worthy of note that after all this hard work, the ambassador program is currently running two official communicational channels for MakerDAO. The program has been given the subdomain latam.makerdao.com for the website. And the Twitter account the team is currently managing is now property of the Dai Foundation, as requested by Soren. And we now have an official MakerDAO email account for the program's communicational needs. Still, we have faced some difficulties along the way. The main problem we found with these new work projects was that we were a too small team for all the tasks at hand. Uh, we have been mainly focused on educational content creation and calls and meetups participation, and this made us lose focus a bit on the community building part of the program. Still, we knew uh, without these foundations, the, the community building part would be very hard to achieve. Uh, this is one of the main reasons we just onboarded a new member to the team, Tomas, who currently works at Belo App as senior community manager, and I believe it's a fourth leg. The program has been missing probably ever since its inception. Uh, most of the stuff I mentioned can be seen in our MIP 55, which couldn't go through due to the endgame approval and MIP 55 deprecation. And this brings us to currently the most pressing matter for the program. Uh, requesting funding to keep operations running in the endgame era and the future projects of the program. The program started building, as I said, an educational project with the object of increasing DAI adoption, increasing the protocol's decentralization, harness regions' raw talents, and especially improving the quality of life for millions of people. And the foundations for that project are ready. Now we need to start building on top of it, and that's why the Ambassador Program wants to align its work with the Scope's pre-games need. Uh, we could say the Ambassador Program's role fall in the middle of two scopes, ecosystem due to translations of official documentation and growth due to educational materials, calls, meetups, and overall branding expansion. Uh, learning, uh, leaning more towards uh, growth uh, than ecosystem, I believe, uh, still, growth uh, not ready to, to take any ecosystem actors yet, I think. And the best way to keep working during this transition would be uh, by being incubated by ecosystem scope through an EA application. Uh, the team is currently working on preparing a one pager and the ecosystem actor application for, for the ecosystem scope facilitators. Uh, I believe uh, the team has proven to be uh, resourceful, hardworking, and, and very committed. So now we would like to hear from the rest of the community what they think would be the best use of this program in the pre-game stage of MakerDAO. Uh, we think this program has a lot of potential during endgame, not only to a system of growth. Uh, the community building and educational part will be very important for all sub-DAOs who might also find the need of translating, maybe not all, but certain critical information or documentation. Uh, the ambassador cur program currently uh, has operational budget until the end of May, and your feedback is more than welcome at this point. One thing I did forgot to mention uh, is uh, uh, based on the strategy we followed for the creation of this kind of content we've been developing is the work uh, we've been doing to get to know our community in order to create a more accurate strategy and education and brand expansion. We launched a poll on our communicational channels. This is uh, Telegram groups, forum, Twitter in order to know age, country of origin, gender, educational level, work situation, income, and so on from our community. Uh, and I have a very small summary of the results uh, that I can share with all of you. We can say that over 75% of the respondents are aged between 17 and 35, 
and over 60% are from Argentina and Venezuela, followed by Peru, Mexico, and Colombia. Uh, over 70% of the respondents are male, and this goes in line with what happens in the rest of the world, where female Bitcoin and Ether users don't surpass the 20%. Also, over 70% have a college degree or are currently studying at a college. This all tells us that the educational contents have only been reaching a certain layer of society. Uh, the real interesting part was to know that 40% of the respondents do not use DAI, 90% mentioned to use another cryptocurrencies, being Bitcoin, USDT, and Ether, the top three, and that almost 50% consider that have ne uh, zero knowledge or low knowledge of MakerDAO. As for utility of DAI in the region, we can say that uh, what we already know, people use DAI as a haven of value to escape inflation and biased local currencies. Uh, and along the option list, we can also find decentralization, stability, day usage, uh, and vault ownership. We made a full report on, on these polls results currently available in Spanish in the forums, and we'll try to, to soon post it in English. So the aims, uh, objectives, and futures of the project would be to continue to translate all future endgame official material done by ecosystem or arbitration, to grow the community and increase our content reach, uh, concentrate in education and branding growth, uh, to have calls and conferences at universities in LATAM, update and maintain the program's communicational channels, such as website, Twitter, and Telegram, and also expand them to YouTube and LinkedIn. Uh, and to be honest, we'd love to have uh, more time to, to work on these projects we've been developing. Uh, as I said, we couldn't have uh, much feedback from our latest MIP55, and we'd love to hear from the community regarding the work done so far. Thank you. Everyone, um, I took off my ear, my ear pods. Can you let me know in the chat if if you can hear me? If that's better. It's better. Oh, okay, terrific. Um, thank you so much for that, Sebex. Um, there are some comments dropping in in the chat. I think one of the the things I wonder if you can comment on or if there's other folks from the growth core unit who are here um if you have a sense of the folks who are either engaging with our content in spanish is there much of of a sense of who's using the content and, and is there a community that's developed around that yet do you see the same kind of discussions that we're having in english um and to what extent like about the decentralization of DAI, the controversy over it being heavily backed by USDC. Um, are, are, are we there yet in terms of that community's level of understanding about the product? What are you hearing on the ground? Sorry, Jose, were you going to say something? Okay, I think that was just an error. Uh, I think the level of understanding in the LATAM community, uh, it's still uh, at a very young stage. That's why we were creating uh, these educational platforms. Uh, of course, uh, the community that's more focused on Web3 and the ecosystem, uh, ask questions about how, how resilient is MakerDAO really in terms of the, its USDC dependence. Uh, but I think uh, talk after talk, we've been uh, bringing some, uh, how to say it, some relax to, to, the, to the topic. 
mainly focused on on the resilience and the flexibility maker thou showed uh, in the in the face of adversity but still uh, i believe talks in regard of this uh, kind of stuff doesn't happen so much and uh, it's more uh, it's uncooked yet the the learning curve for for latam yeah hi everyone uh, luis from growth here so if i can add more info about uh, what civics uh, was uh, responding to to kenga's question basically in latin america it's it's different uh, like this let's say discussion around DAI being decentralized and all the stuff uh, it's like people here is not like let's say very very into that people here are they just care about using uh unstable coin they just care to have a, a method so they can like let's say save in in us dollars so that's why in latin america usdt have like everything like all the territories usdt territory and people who use DAI in latin america the they are like that people who really study who well they say okay i can use this uh, cryptocurrency that is uh, decentralized etc or people that is like looking for the best yields uh, opportunities on DeFi protocols, but they are like a very very small amount of of people that is like very uh, into using uh, like die for for those reasons. Uh, right now, people in Latin America use like ton like a lot uh, Binance peer to peer or another peer to peer. Uh, or regional exchanges, and most of them uh, they are use uh, basically flow uh, with uh, USDT. Yes, I believe uh, the main aspect of this is that people want to use a, a decentralized stablecoin and and get the benefits from it, but uh, they're not so worried about uh, the governance layers of MakerDAO. Uh, and how it works because uh, they don't yet understand how how everything is being setting in motion and that's part of the things we want to solve in order to get them more involved with the governance of MakerDAO uh, so yeah that's the way we want to go so I guess that leads me to want to ask and and this is really for everyone on the call to to chime in um what what does growth look like so as we last week we talked about you know this future vision for maker and for die and it's used all over the world um how does that demand where does that demand come from and what's the relationship? Is there a relationship? And Matt Frontier Research asked, how important is it in the community to have crypto native ways to use its spend die versus holding it to preserve value? Um, you know, is it just is it is it really just an issue of of mark of, of marketing? I mean, you know, as we are these three weeks thinking more in Monet, it's great to have you on the call. You know great presentation last week um, around the AALM, uh, AML, <laughs> get them mixed up, ALM issues. You know, should we as a, as a CVC be thinking about the growth and the demand question, or is, is there no relationship whatsoever between like what we think is good from you know, maybe an economics or a risk management perspective and how the users in other parts of the world are considering the product anyone have thoughts on that they want to share on the mic well i i can share a little bit uh, so yeah like for example a uh, sebastian from uh, the uh, strategic finance career. I don't know if you have ever checked his uh, Dune analytics uh, or MakerDAO. So if you can check, like in the part where is uh, where is where is the like the die? Most of the die is on Ethereum matrices. Uh, 
uh, right now the like most of the people who use uh, DAI and the Maker Protocol, they are basically people who want to do decentralized leverage or people who want to use, who just want to arbitrage between stable coins. Like for example, I don't know when DAI is above USDT or USDC and they want to go through through the PSM. Uh, for example, in, in, in our in our like part or or our work in, in growth is to yeah to try to, to connect every single part of the world or the any finance uh, with MakerDAO, like trying to, to get on and off ramps, trying to get at most uh, centralized exchanges or other methods so we can like reach uh, most of the of the people uh, around the world. But when you go like to, to the actual numbers uh, the real people who use uh, DAI are like these real DeFi people, people who, 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 yeah, who they use basically half the ether mainly. They go through to the Maker Protocol. They took this loan in DAI and they go and buy more ether with with that DAI and they do it over and over again. That's like the the yeah m most of the people who who use who use DAI are this kind of this kind of users, and and we can see that. Uh, on these uh, kind of analytics, but there there is still like some partners who who help a lot to 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 yeah to drive this uh, awareness or all the tools we might uh, we might use in order to to yeah increase uh, the usage, but it's kind of hard to uh, do all the. Right now, with all these uh, so so yeah, that, that that's a, a little bit of how it is, uh, let's say right now, and that's why, for example, in in Latin America, they started like really really hard, uh, like uh, really uh, really strong, let's say the the word two two years ago. And a lot of exchanges, they were like super excited, like using the eye, using everything uh, in order to, to attract people. But right now it's uh, kind of difficult due to regulatory things. For example, uh, I don't know, uh, events like the UST one was another event that really hit the, the community. So, so yeah. I think part of what Luis uh, just said has to do with the educational part uh, as uh, only people who knows about the, the ecosystem and Web3 are the ones using DAI and uh, the, the, the majority, vast majority of people are not uh, and we have to ask ourselves why, probably because uh, Education haven't been the strong point on MakerDAO, not only in Spanish, but probably in English as well. Uh, but there are probably other factors that that may be causing this, and is uh, where uh, people are not aware about what DAI can uh, do for them. For example, here in Argentina, we have an inflation around six or seven percent per month. This means if someone just uh, gets uh, gets paid and they put all those all those pesos to die and just start using a, an account like lemon app and using their die through a visa they can save that 7% that would be uh, uh, eaten by the inflation of the country uh, and this is something not practically nobody knows or does this is a function that's not been given to the die and that could save uh, uh, almost a 10 percent of the salaries of the people each month and that's a lot uh, and the lack of of this awareness from the community is what's uh, making uh, uh, i don't know how to say it uh, the die usage very stringed I think one of them. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know if you are hear me well. Yes. Yes, uh, Ivan here from the Ambassador Program. I think one of the most important things to keep in mind, if we are speaking about Latin America, 
we can think like in two layers. Of course, there's going to be problems and opportunities that cross all the region. Like, for example, I don't know, corruptions of governments, uh, inflation, in different levels, of course, and especially a lack of confidence about institutions and governments. So we can identify like general problems for the Latin American region. But I think it's very, very important to keep in mind that Latin America, it's like a mosaic and every country is pretty different to compare to another one. So if we are trying to think in problems and possibilities for die usage and things like that, we need to, to understand the reality of the different countries. And I think that's one of the main interests of the ambassador program in the future. We need to understand what kind of how the people in Venezuela could use DAI, and that's going to be different if we compare that to the people in Argentina or Chile or Uruguay. So we have so many different regulations and bureaucracies in, in every country. But I think that one of the most important things to do in the future, if we are thinking about maker growing in Latin America, is we need to start to analyze in depth the realities of the different regions inside Latin America. And uh, that is key for me to, to understand how DAI could progress in, in the region. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, and Juan, I see your comment in the chat about is our topic uh, ALM, and it is actually, um, but we're coming at it by kind of first principles in a way. Wh what is DAI? How is it being used? You know, I, I think is the vision picking up the mantle that Bitcoin lost to be this this form of money um, and therefore, you know, having this conversation about, you know, the ambassador program and its use in Latin America, you know, we're hoping as a refi CBC to get a better perspective on how the demand side is operating there. What are some of the opportunities and really, I think, you know, um, Bona Publica, you've also put in the in the chat a question, what is the status of implementing digital public goods infrastructure in South and Central America? Um, you know, would you say 50% of businesses in the region are using Wi-Fi? Um, so, you know, I mean, this is such, there's so many layers to unpack. We're certainly not gonna do it on this call, um, but I feel like we're, for me anyway, my wheels are, my mental wheels are starting to turn around. Um, okay, there's a whole other set of perspectives and questions and, 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 um, and dialogue to have before I think we as a, a CVC can, can talk about ALM in the sense of, you know, what does the protocol need to provide the right product First, we, we want to really have a, a view on what the product is meant to accomplish. Um, and that's DAI. And it's not even, you know, kind of looking at some of the other uh, product or business applications, you know, permissionless credit, you know, kind of the whole suite of things. But here, Monet saying, think usage is related to ALM, basically the composition of the liability side. Yes, exactly. Um, so what do, what do folks on the call think about, you know, die as, as money can maker, can die go head to head with <laughs> tethers, um, in other parts of the world. We obviously have a, a big backdrop of regulatory dynamics. Um, there's a bunch of questions up for vote right now that are getting to the heart of some of the opportunities available to generate yield on the collateral. 
any thoughts that people have from what they've heard so far about how die should be designed whether maker as a protocol should be competing as money i mean because we have in our constitution right this vision this mission of being an unbiased world currency so like what is that and are we building for that what does that look like for the world anyone want to come off mute and can uh pop in and say a, just a couple words if that's all right yes um, please yeah i think um we i think it does in a, in a lot of ways it makes sense to try and kind of uh work our way in as a currency that's that's used as money um and conceptually sort of like the benefit from an alm perspective is um if people are getting a lot of convenience out of holding die and like they can go to a supermarket or something and pay a bill you know whatever the case is they can use it in commerce um it means that on average the you know basically the reason people hold die is going to be less financial of just yield farming or earning money on you know earning a return and it's more about the utility they're getting basically like a convenience yield they're getting out of it so um if die gets more adopted in commerce um on one hand you know like seb has described in the past like the sort of um maturity profile of our liabilities how quickly we expect some of that die to leave the protocol in like a, a bad case scenario that might actually get a little bit better um, because people are you know are using it in commerce rather than just you know being DeFi degens who will just switch to whatever the next stable coin is um, and it also improves you know, the protocol's sort of like financial resilience because if people are demanding less return out of DAI and they're just using it, um, then the you know the sort of margin that we're we're making between what we're earning on our our collateral and such versus what we have to pay out in the DAI savings rate will get better. Um, so yeah, I think it's a lot of benefits to you know if we can swing it and you know compete with Tether. As an actual payment currency that would um, benefit users who have a you know more reliable stablecoin they can use versus tether uh, but it benefits the protocol as well um, i think it comes along hand in hand with more responsibility though because our current user base um, you know yeah it's DeFi focused people they're fairly sophisticated they're much more likely than the average person on the street to like be kind of keeping up with um, you know, potential changes in how MakerDAO is working. Um, so if we have a lot more uh, regular users, then we kind of have a lot more responsibility to manage our risk correctly, to have like sort of clear disclosures so that people can understand how DAI works better. Um, so yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, it's definitely like an important kind of uh, medium long-term goal. So, um, brings a lot of responsibility with it as well. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, um, that's making me think about our our structure. Um, you know, the, the debate around serving retail, obviously with Endgame, we're looking at simplifying the core and having sub DAOs and you know, there's there's a lot of conversation about layer layer two. So I guess I would want to go back to the ambassador team or folks who are familiar with what people are doing in Latin America. Um, you know, what 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 do the apps look like? What are, what are the partnerships that impact the end user who might be using Dai more as money? So how, how can you can give us some color? on what does it look like kind of at a very tactical practical level if you're in latin america and you ha and you have a choice to use die like do they use coinbase there is it you know kind of what are some of the mechanics and that's a p, p a similar question how do the on and off ramps work um is it easy to onboard and get die 
Yeah, yeah. And also, yeah, sort of anyone have con concept context on the fiat connections to exchanges or payment apps, or you know, just give a, a little overview of how that setup looks. Uh, here in Argentina, uh, one of the most used app is Absis Finance, but uh, people are really using, using uh, stable coins for for payment methods uh, through different exchanges such as Belo, Ripio, Lemon App Exchange. They all offer the chance to to pay uh, your daily your daily buys uh, with the card and make this change exactly there. Um, not so sure uh, about the, the, the off-ramps, uh, but it's pretty easy to, to get DAI uh, with your pesos through different exchanges and app with a minimum commission. Uh, it's pretty easy to get. The thing is not everyone knows how to Yeah, and like another, another 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 way that is also pre pre used. Uh, like people here also really like uh, peer to peer. Uh, for example, in Venezuela, Binance is uh, super 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 huge. I can I can go for example uh, today at, at night and eat a, a hamburger right next to my place, and I can pay in uh, through Binance Pay. Uh, people use here a lot uh, by peer to peer, but as Sevix was saying, in Argentina, for example, they have a lot more renal exchanges, so they can exchange uh, their uh, stable coins mainly, or their recon or their ether into into their native uh, currency. And yeah, for the other countries, I don't know, like. Mexico, Colombia, they also have like some regional exchanges that help a lot with that. But people here also love uh, a lot uh, peer to peer, even like doing the these uh, deals uh, really in, in, in person. Uh, there is people who have their native currency, but in cash, and they say, let's uh, get together in some street or in some park. I send you the the crypto and then you get me the, the the cash yeah that's something that happens here as well uh, we call them crypto caves uh, uh, it's uh, somewhere where you can just send your die and receive usd or pesos or or whatever you want uh, from your crypto and that's very used here as well it's not an official that. channel of course Yes, I think that the adoption in, in South America, it's pretty on the rise. For example, uh, there was an, a report, Crypto Slate, uh, I think last month, that say that Argentina, for example, has 10 million users of crypto. That's more users than in Germany, I think, for example. And for example, this Last month in, in Chile, it's going to be a new crypto wallet made by a vintage called Mercado Libre, very important in South America. Also in Peru, there is a vintage called Maximo that has established a, a partnership with Binance and Mastercard to, to have a, a, a debit card a prepaid debit card so people in Peru can use crypto like in daily life. Um, and also in Brazil, uh, well, Coinbase now accept that, that you can buy crypto in reais in the, in the fiat of the country. So I think that yes, there are a lot of partnerships and uh, and on ways of using crypto in the region that are on the rise, absolutely. One thing that people love here, and I came to realize, 
is to get the cash back from from the things you buy with your crypto and this is something that kind of defines if someone actually uses an app or or it doesn't for example lemon app was a very big thing here and since they started implementing a, a, a system for for getting the two percent cash back in in bitcoin uh, it suffered a, a very big migration of users uh, to another app just because it gave them that two percent or three percent of cashback and this is something that Dai could be taking advantage of uh, making connections and establishing partnership with different exchanges uh, exchange apps here uh, in order to offer some kind of cashback in Dai, uh, and that would highly uh, uh, that would grow the, the usage of Dai here Well, Monet, I, um, taking your comments about the positive impact of DAI being used as a currency, um, when we as a CVC think about the advisory council role, um, that's also been a big focus over the past couple of weeks, what kind of expert advice we want to retain to help us where do folks on this call think we might need or benefit from advice about, you know, I guess beefing up the demand side as a currency? Like, do people, would people see some of the things we're talking about on this call being relevant inputs to, um, you know, the scope edits that we eventually want to make around liquidity and stability. And certainly, Monet, as a facilitator, if you want to say anything more specifically about like the kinds of, um, or any other facilitators who are on the call, the, the sorts of counsel or expert advice or consulting that you would find most helpful to support the expertise we already have in-house. You know, I think as a CVC, we don't want to make unhelpful recommendations or lead conversations in ways that are just going to make your lives harder. Um, is this area, you know, additive, you know, kind of thinking about the demand side and or, 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 you know, I guess the, the other, the last thing I'll say about that is like, I think what we most immediately are trying to do as a CVC is write down um, what kinds of experts, right? And so in my mind, as I'm listening to all of you, I'm thinking, all right, I don't just want somebody from KPMG <laughs> coming in here. I'm also wanting to figure out, you know, how how is how can that how can a group of experts pool some of these really important threads together as inputs into okay, you know, here's now what what we need to be thinking about in managing the risk profile of the protocol. And we've got 10 more minutes, so you know, we can also transition this into any other more businessy comments people have, tactical questions about the CVC operations or, you know, what we're going to do practically with this really great conversation that we've had. And thank you, every, everyone who's here and those of you who've been speaking. I think it's appropriate. And I, of course, you know, the delegates who are following this strategy, we want to hear from you that the regenerative finance CVC, you know, can really lean in to support um, the opportunities that I think are quite obvious from this conversation. What do, what do you all think?
Okay, I'll read some of the um, comments in the chat. Monet says about the advisory council, if Dai gets more commercial adoption, might be interesting to get perspectives from fintech people, right? PayPal type companies who might have more experience with deposit withdrawal flows. Okay, great comment. Code Knight says it's worth clarifying expansion of on chain and off chain usage of Dai. They have very different strategies. Absolutely. Uh, Monet is saying we have pretty good understanding of liability maturity profile of, of DeFi native DAI users, but it might be a bit different for regular users. Yeah, and then that's that's the question also of high level in. I'm not sure where when growth is coming up if in terms of the scope framework on the calendar. Um, but you know what what do we want Dai to really look like? And and how would we prioritize? I mean, our our focus, our strategic focus and resources. Um, and there's the meta question of how any particular one of us on this call, <laughs> given our role and responsibilities that we're, or our, our volunteering, what, whatever we're doing, you know, how do we take these things from a conversation in this hour to a governance action that, you know, causes something to happen? Let's see. We got a comment about Latin America that the only place where crypto is forbidden is Bolivia. And in Venezuela, you have an erratic approach from the government. I think we'd love to get some context on what's erratic. Um, Monet's also saying someone who's experienced in writing prospectus or other risk disclosure could be useful, although I'm not sure if this fits into stability and liquidity scope versus somewhere else. Well, actually, you know, I have thought about whether an attorney as part of the advisory council would be kind of useful um, because a lot of the a lot of the regulatory stuff in in the, in the u s is around disclosure, right? I mean, like the and I think it's I think your suggestion about the fintech companies and payment apps is a great one because it, you know we're getting into the consumer protection space. Um, and so certainly it's like this iterative process of like, okay, well, if we want to grow die and retail is using it as money, then it's like, well, then you know, what does that framing trigger from what we ought to know just, to be effective, but then also, you know, the entire regulatory landscape we're navigating around the world as to what this product is and what are our various roles in it. Um, okay, so five more minutes. Any, um, anyone else want to speak of what's on your mind? Feedback for me as your hostess without all the mostest um, and often technical issues. The work that we're trying to organize asynchronously, um, I think we've got a fifth delegate signed up to follow the regenerative finance strategy. Appreciate all the interaction as we're, I think, starting to get our sea legs. So this is our second week doing the uh, voice channel chat in the Discord. How are people liking this experience, the dynamic? So not Zoom in the Maker Discord. Emojis in the chat. Does someone want to speak? Yay! <laughs> okay. You guys are so shy. No, you don't want to get banned. Want, <laughs> I, I just wanted to say thanks for having us and 
letting us speak uh, about our projects and what we've been doing so far. We hope to keep contributing and and doing uh, the things we we said we would to to start working with the scopes during the pregame. Thank you all for having us. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. And you know we're definitely gonna iterate on this. And you've all who have spoken certainly given me, and I think everyone on the call we're seeing it in the chat uh, a lot of food for thought and. Frankly, it's really for me. It's it's refreshing. It's exciting to 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 talk about and hear just a just a little bit. I want to hear so much more about people whose lives are really being changed by the opportunity to hold a dollar equivalent, or you know, the peer to peer that you know transactions and structure that's going on. It's 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 really exciting. So. Um, we actually okay. haven't talked about a lot of stuff like uh, there's a lot of Web3 projects uh, with social impact uh, as its flag. And there's a lot of things that are happening here in Latin America that are very interesting. And we might uh, talk about them in some other call. Perfect. That's great. Yes. <laughs> and And certainly feel free to always uh t tag us myself on the forum or at good news which is the acre dows maker ambassador and you know we are working as a refi cvc on how to grow what it is that we're doing um and see how it, this this hour and the operations of our committee in general uh can do even more for MakerDAO and for DAI uh, than what we are absolutely, of course, have to do and are doing around the governance and the um, the scopes. Uh, but yeah, there's a big task ahead of us around the purpose fund and the the the, the charitable impact and the, all the impact stuff and regenerative economy and on and on and on and on. So we'll all have so much fun um, working together and with all of you. Thank you very much. And we'll see you next week. Same time, same place. Bye, everybody. <laughs>